Good morning, everyone. Our opening song is out of the glory and praise, which is a larger book. Number 612, 612, for you are my God. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. You give marvelous comrades to me, the faithful who dwell in your land, those who choose alien gods have chosen an alien band. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. You are my portion and cup. It is you that I claim for my prize. Your heritage is my delight, the lot you have given to me. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. On this feast of St. Luke, the evangelist, we ask his intercession as we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Stephen Mielko, Gino and Antonetta Luizon, the special intention for David and Lynn Hibbett, who actually celebrate their 50th today. And also we pray for the repose of the soul of Ron Thompson, who will be buried from our parish this morning. For the times we fail to love God as we should, we bow our heads and ask for his mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord God, who chose St. Luke to reveal by his preaching and writings the mystery of your love for the poor, grant that those who already glory in your name may persevere as one heart and one soul, and that all nations may merit to see your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, as Gentiles by birth, remember that you were at time without Christ, being aliens with the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For Christ is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, hostility between us. He has abolished the law with commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death the hostility through it. So Christ came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together 
and grows in holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak to his people, peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, and his glory may dwell in our land. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Be watchful, pray constantly, that you may be worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. For truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. On this Feast of St. Luke, we give praise to God for the gift of the evangelist, who, though many feel, as I say in my podcast episode today, that Luke was an eyewitness to Jesus' ministry, which is false. St. Luke was a disciple of St. Paul and was moved to faith as a result of the witness of St. Paul, who also was not an eyewitness to Jesus' life and ministry. And so in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he reminds the people and reminds all of us that Jesus is the cornerstone, the foundation of our faith, and that when we are rooted in him, we recognize that the body of the church, which is actually the body of Christ, with Christ at his, its head, as St. Paul says, comes together. Jesus is the source of all life. He is the one who brings us together. It is by his command. It is by his invitation that we are called to his sacred altar. And as such, it is such a privilege for us to feast in this heavenly banquet in which Jesus is the host who gives us his own flesh and blood to eat and drink. And so as we witness to the example of St. Luke, who as our opening prayer says, calls the world to understand response to the poor, to deepen our relationship with Jesus, may we do just that, to deepen our relationship with the Lord and care for those who are most vulnerable. Confident in God's loving grace, let us turn to him with our prayers trusting that the Lord always listens. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in religious vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our diocese, we ask that the Lord will continue to bless those who are discerning this call with a generous and open heart, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are elected in government. May God's justice be in their hearts and guide their decision-making, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are facing adversity 
or the burden of any kind. May the peace of Jesus calm their fears and bring them consolation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who worship in this place that we call home, St. Joseph's. May God's grace help us to grow in perfection and faith and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are sick. We remember especially Father Stephen, that Jesus, the divine physician, may heal them of mind, body, and spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially Stephen and Gino and Antonetta and Ron. May the peace of Christ bring them eternal rest, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we bring to God from the silence of our hearts. O God, in your compassion, we ask that you hear us and answer our prayers. We make these and all prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. St. Luke, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant through your heavenly gifts that we may serve you in freedom of heart, we pray, O Lord, so that the offerings we make on this feast day of St. Luke may bring us healing and give us glory. Through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand on firm apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness here on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servants, Stephen, Gino, Antonetta, and Ron, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with St. Luke, whose feast day we celebrate today, with St. Paul, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
For those receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we have received by your holy altar may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel, which St. Luke proclaimed through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family. Protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. 
Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. Glad are my heart and my soul. Securely my body shall rest. For you will not leave me for dead, nor let your beloved astray. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. You show me the path for my life, in your presence the fullness of joy, to be at your right hand forever. For me would be happiness always. For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Defend me, O Lord. God bless you. Have a good day.